This month in RAD Studio we have the 10.4.2 release. We have the extended uh, Delphi 26th birthday promotion from Embarcadero. We have the Tea, Coffee and Code chat show, podcast, I guess you would call it. Uh, and lastly, we have an update on the DPM package manager. Thanks for joining me this month. Uh, my name's Malcolm Groves from Code Partners. Uh, let's get straight into it. Uh, I guess the big news this month is the release of Delphi C Builder Rad Studio 10.4.2. This is the third release of the 10.4. Sydney, 10.4. Sydney, 10.4. Sydney product. Uh, we had 10.4, 10.4.1, 10.4.2. See, I can count. Um, both uh, fixes and new features involved in the package. There's been a bunch of noise about it, so possibly you've already uh, seen about this. So I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. Uh, I'll provide links to everything I'm about to show uh, below. Um, but there is a, uh, uh, a blog post on the Embarcadero website that goes into a reasonable amount of detail about what's covered. Um, there's uh, a couple of new VCL controls, T control list, uh, T number box. Uh, there's an update for the uh, T edge browser so that it works with the release version of Microsoft's new Chromium based uh, browser. Um, also an update to the Konopka signature controls, which are the controls formerly known as uh, raise controls. Um, a bunch of focus around um, developer productivity and IDE uh, user experience. Um, the LSP based code insight that was introduced in 10.4 I think um, has had a lot of work done on it so it's both a lot of the you know issues with it have been resolved but also new features added. Um, one example being uh, error insight uh, now supports showing warnings and hints uh, with little squiggly lines in the uh, editor, not only the errors that it did previously, um, but also a lot of fixes for the LSP uh, based code insight. Probably should have started it if you're not aware with of, of what the LSP based code insight is. Um, basically, it's an effort to take code, so code insight in the browser uh, code insight in the IDE uh, and make it use the compiler rather than another uh, parser. Yep, in the past it used to use an, a separate parser and then there were issues with that parser not staying in sync with the compiler as new language features were released. Um, what LSP lets Embarcadero do is have it all driven by the same parser in the compiler. So the, the upside of that is that uh, when a new language feature is added or whatever, or if, if your code compiles by the compiler, you should, uh, code inside and error inside and all of those things should also support the same code. Yeah? Um, that's the theory. Uh, some people have experienced some issues with it in, in 10.4 and then 10.4.1. Um, I have to say I've had a pretty uh, smooth experience with it, touch wood. Um, but I know some customers, for example, who've had some issues on their projects. Um, this uh, 10.4.2 has a bunch of um, fixes. Um, and I know, for example, that one, one of those customers that uh, I knew was having problems has come back to me just this week and told me that the um, 10.4.2 has resolved their problem. So if you were experiencing issues and you flipped back to the classic code insight, uh, with 10.4.2, it might be worth having another look and seeing if uh, if that's resolved your problems. Yeah. Anyway, I went off on a little LSP tangent there that I didn't mean to. Um, 10.4.2, other features. Um, there's a, a, a lot of, as I said, a lot of uh, user experience improvements inside the IDE. Uh, some little things, um, some bigger things. Uh, one that I'm really fond of um, is the ability to control click on the inherited keyword inside a method and navigate up to the correct ancestor uh, method, the correct overridden uh, method, which is kind of nice. Uh, also, this, uh, I wish I'd had this a few months ago, um, the ability inside your inside the IDE to convert um, absolute paths to relative paths and back again. So where, where it hurt me a couple of months ago, um, 
inherited a project from someone, um, their project search path was full of absolute paths which didn't map to drives on my on my machine and I had to manually go through change all of those to relative paths so that it would find the correct paths on my machine that's now just a button click yeah I wish it had been a few months ago but anyway it's great that it is now yeah a um, few other things uh, as well as a bunch of other things but um, other sort of big items um, platform support Android 11 Mac OS 11 iOS 14 um, and also a bunch of compiler improvements according to this over 20 different compiler optimizations to make the compiler run uh, to, to actually do its job faster uh, I'm not aware of what the details of those are but that certainly looks interesting faster compiler helps everybody um, but also uh, as always not just new features but bug fixes yeah so the numbers I've heard are more than 600 publicly reported bugs have been fixed um, but the number I heard, I think maybe on the webinar the other day, um, was that it's more than a thousand bug fixes in total. So some of those bug fixes are internally reported, um, uh, uh, beta um, reported, beta tester reported, those sorts of things. But 600, more than 600 publicly reported bugs fixed. Yeah. Now, if you're like um, uh, a number of people I know, myself included, one of the first things you do when you install a new version of the IDE is to install a new version of the uh, IDE fix pack from Andreas Haslam. I hope I didn't butcher his name too much. Um, well, you'll be if you're in that boat, you'll be pleased to know that the Embarcadero effort to pull those fixes from the IDE fix pack into the IDE continues. Um, Darian Miller. Uh, put this blog post up the other day um, talking about uh, more than 30 additional fixes from the IDE fix pack have now been pulled into the IDE inside 10.4.2 um, and according to him this bit that I've uh, highlighted here is that that now means that in fact most of the IDE fix pack fixes are now inside the core ID uh, the core IDE yeah so that's kind of cool um, I don't know what the remaining ones are. Possibly some of them are not ones that, that are going to be pulled in. Maybe they are and it's just time. I don't know. But basically what it means is that all of the advantages that that um, fix pack used to give you speed ups, more stable environment, all that sort of stuff is now part of the core product as well. Yeah. So kind of cool. Um, on the topic of um, the new release, uh, you possibly saw recently that there was a webinar last week in fact there was a webinar talking about what's new in 10.4.2 yeah uh, the replay for that webinar has now gone up so like all of these things i'll put a link to that webinar uh, that replay uh, in the description below um, when you go and have a look at it um, don't freak out because when you first go and look at it i know when i went and looked at it uh, it's more than four hours long yeah, four hours and 15 minutes long. Um, it's not, don't, don't worry. Only the first 45 minutes or so of this webinar is in fact the webinar. The remainder is the interactive Q&A session, a recording of the interactive Q&A session that was done after the, the three different webinar broadcasts in different time zones. So I think they've basically taken the, the Q&A section from each of those broadcasts and stuck them on the end. So, you know, COVID restrictions and everything, we've all maybe been missing a little bit of social interaction. So if, if that sort of discussion type thing appeals, then go for it. You've got three and a half hours of content there you can, you can uh, join in on. Um, but if you just want to focus and you, you run screaming at the idea of four hours of webinar, uh, if you just want to focus on the actual webinar, it's just the first 45 minutes, okay? If that's still too long for you, yeah, uh, and you just want like the trailer version, yeah, uh, one of the highlights, there's also a three and a half minute, you know, here are the bullet points, what's covered in 10.4.2 uh, release, yeah? So I'll put links to both of those in the, um, in the show notes. What else? So what accompanies a new release for many people is 
uh, confusion and frustration about how to download it, how to get it installed, um, what, what serial number should I be using, all that kind of stuff. We get lots of questions from people every time there's a new release. Um, so what I've done this time, um, because I kind of expected to get those same questions, uh, and, and in fact, I, you know, it's not just that people can't work it out, it's that it's actually been changing in recent versions. You know, where you go to download it from, where you can find out um, what patches and, and updates you're registered to receive, that has changed in recent versions. So maybe the last time you did it, it was totally different. Yeah. So what um, what I've done is I've done, I couldn't find anywhere a nice detailed step-by-step -step write up on how to, how to do all of this stuff. Yeah. So I've, um, I've done one. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, I'll probably try and keep it a living document so that as new versions come out and as changes come out and, and screen layouts change, then we can, uh, we can do it. But I've got a new, I've put a post up on our website talking about how to download the latest versions. Yeah. Um, and it starts with things about knowing how do you find out whether your update script subscription is current. Um, you know, logging into the, the portal, what user ID you should log into the uh, product portal, um, where you can find out your subscription status, where you can find out your serial number, all that kind of stuff. Um, how do you know if it's, if it's expired or not? Also then, where do you go to download the installer? Yep, and which installer? The ISO, the web install, what are the pluses and minuses of both of those? Yep. So this is up on our website now. Uh, oh, and then also inevitably what happens is sometimes you get stuck at that point. Um, where do you go after that? Yeah, you can't find the right login for the product portal. Um, you can't find the right product in the list. Um, you've got problems when you're actually doing the install, all that stuff. That's what I'm trying to cover in this article. Yeah. So again, I'll put a link below. Hopefully that might save you some frustration, especially if you're trying to do all of this on a weekend or something and, and your reseller or whoever you bought it off is not, um, is not available. Yeah. Okay. Next up, uh, maybe all of this discussion of 10.4.2 has got you all excited and you, you're keen to, to upgrade or uh, you know, get your subscription current again, all that kind of stuff. Well, if that's the case, um, Embarcadero in uh, February was running a 26% off promotion for the 26th birthday of Delphi. Jan uh, February 14 was the 26th birthday. Um, I'm not telling you this because, well, it's now March and that's not there anymore. So I'm not teasing you. They've extended it through to the end of March. Yep. So if you were thinking about it and now you've seen something you really like in 1042 or whatever, or you, or you've, you want to get additional licenses or whatever, um, that promotion is now, uh, extended through to the end of the Mar end of March. So if that's of interest, get in contact with your reseller or your Embarcadero salesperson or whatever. Um, I'll put a link below to some details on our website about it, um, but be aware you've now got another four weeks or so to uh, make your mind up about whether now is the time to get up to date. Okay. Uh, next topic that I wanted to talk about was this thing called Tea, Coffee and Code. Um, maybe before when I was talking about the three and a half hours of developers having a chat, and doing Q and A at the end of the webinar. If that sounded really um, exciting to you, uh, then maybe T Coffee and Code is something you want to check out. Um, basically, T Coffee and Code is a well. I don't know if they will describe it this way, but I kind of think of it as being like a developer chat show. Um, I think it's driven by Stephen Ball and out of the UK. He seems to have been the instigator behind it. But each episode has different uh, guests on with him talking about different topics. Yep. And you can see they all run to about an hour or so, or maybe a bit less in a couple of cases, but things like uh, managing open source projects, uh, test driven development. Now, obviously there's a Delphi angle to these topics, but they're sometimes larger than Delphi as well. Like test driven development and managing open source projects isn't not just about Delphi. Um, uh, one with, um, David Marco about um, language, about language and language enhancements and, and the Delphi language itself and the C++ language itself. So again, I'll put a link into these um, 
uh, into this playlist. Um, but uh, if, if you're looking for something to watch over lunch or something like that, this could be just the, just the ticket for you. Yeah. Lastly, this month, uh, this month, I just wanted to give a, a, a shout out and a bit of awareness um, to the uh, DPM, which is the Delphi Package Manager. This is a project, another project by the um, very prolific um, Vincent Parrott from uh, Vsoft Technologies, the guys behind Final Builder, uh, also the guy behind DUnit X and Delphi Mox and probably a whole bunch of others. Oh, there's the command line classes. Um, there's, he seems to be uh, quite prolific when it comes to open source projects. DPM is a bigger one. Um, it's still open source, um, but it's a bigger one. Um, it's really aiming to give the Delphi environment the equivalent sort of pack package manager that um, you know .NET has with NuGet, for example, or in other environments, things like NPM, uh, those sorts of package managers where you can define your third-party dependencies, those sorts of things for your project, and then when you open it, you can have it check to see if there are updates for those things, or automatically install them, uh, maybe give your project over to someone else and they can just automatically grab all of those dependencies and have them uh, have them compiled and ready ready for the IDE to use. Um, or the angle that I'm more interested in it from is to have my uh, continuous delivery tool do that, so Jenkins or, or whatever. Um, do that as part of the build, you know, grab a project that it needs to build, grab the latest versions of the dependencies or a specific version of the dependencies and compile them and go, yeah? If that kind of thing sounds interesting to you, he uh, put out sort of a post a while ago with his thoughts about how we could, how he could do this and how he should do it. And, and I think a fair bit of discussion um, came after that. But he's just recently posted an update saying that there's kind of a new new version uh, out or new versions um, with a bunch of new features. But one of the items in it which is interesting is the IDE integration. So it's no longer just a command line tool to do all of this stuff, but uh, IDE integration. And if you look at it, pretty deep IDE integration. That's pretty impressive um, uh, uh, open tools project from from my my uh, impression. I remember once trying to do this uh, project manager uh, uh, integration through the open tools API, and and I, I just don't think I was smart enough. Um, Vincent clearly is smart enough, so this is looking really nice. Um, so if you're interested, come and check it out. I'll put a link in the uh, items below. There's still some features that need to come, but it certainly looks like. Um, it's at a point where if this is the kind of thing that you've been wishing for inside the, the Rad Studio ecosystem, it certainly looks like it's at a point where, where you can start to play with it and maybe even start to contribute as it is an open source project. Yeah? Okay. That'll do us for this month. Um, thanks for sticking all the way through. If you want to get notified when new uh, episodes come out, uh, you can do that in a bunch of ways. You can subscribe here inside YouTube um, if you're watching it in YouTube. Otherwise, in the notes below, there'll be links to a whole bunch of places where you can uh, follow uh, the Code Partners social uh, feeds, Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Um, so follow one of that, whichever is your preferred poison, follow one of those uh, to get notified when new stuff comes out. Uh, otherwise, uh, here it's just moved from summer into autumn, which I'm a little bit sad about, but I guess you Northern Hemisphere guys are probably starting to get happy because it's just moved into spring. But wherever you are, I uh, hope you have a good month. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy all your coding during March and uh, look forward to seeing you back here in April for this month in Rad Studio. Cheers. Mm -hmm.